Good afternoon. We will pay attention to the theory behind the reconciliation of the debtor's control account with the debtor's list. Before you can determine how you must do this reconciliation, you must ensure that you know how entries are posted from the subsidiary journals to the general ledger and to the debtor's ledger. If we look at the information that's provided here, there's a debtor's journal and there's individual entries for the different debtors. And then we've got the totals that was added up at the end of the month. Now, when we post from the subsidiary journal, the debtor's journal, to the ledger, the general ledger, it means that I take this total of 4,100 and I debit the total in the debtor's control account to indicate that the debt is increased with this total amount of 4100 and I will credit the sales account to complete my double entry and increase the income of 4100 When we post to the debtor's ledger, the individual entries that appear in the journal will be posted to the individual accounts of the debtors in the debtors ledger. So if we look at P. Lowe, for instance, we sold goods to him for 1200 So on the 10th, I will show that we increase his account with 1200 Then we sell to Stain for 800 and we sell to Stain again for 900 So on the 14th, I will show we issued an invoice to him increased his account with 800 on the 28th we issued an invoice again increased his account to a total of 1600 so what do we learn out of this example is that the individual accounts that appear inside the journal will go to the debtors ledger the totals will go to the debtors control so therefore, if you made a mistake in the journal, say for instance for low, instead of writing 1,200, we write 1,020. Then it means because we made the mistake there, we will take the wrong figure to his account, so I will have to correct it in his account. If I wrote there 1,020, this total will also be wrong, so I take the wrong total to the debtor's control. Therefore, it means if I made a mistake in the journal, whether it is that I swap figures in the journal, or I put it in the wrong journal, or I don't record anything in the journal, or we um, made a mistake in the journal itself, then it means that I have to correct the mistake in both the debtor's control account and in the debtor's ledger because the result of that mistake is that the wrong figure will go to the debtor's ledger and the wrong total will go to the debtor's control. So any mistake inside the journal, whether you omitted an entry or you made a mistake in the journal because the source document was wrong or you made a mistake in the journal, will have to be corrected in both places. After we complete the debtor's ledger, we will draw up a debtor's list. So it means the debtor's list is actually a summary of everything that's in your debtor's ledger. And I will look at the balances and say low owes us 1,200. Al Stein owes us 1,600. K. Ru owes us 1,400. So that means the total amount that all of them owe us is 4,200. What is the balance in my debtor's control? 4,100. What is the total in my debtor's list? 4,000. 200. So that indicates to me immediately that we made a mistake because the debtor's list, the total, 
and the balance in the debtors control should be the same because we are transferring the entries inside the journal to the individual accounts of the people and we take the total to the debtors control. Therefore, we have to go and look where the mistakes were made so that we can correct these mistakes. First of all, I will look at my debtors journal and determine if I made a mistake here. If I add up 10, 14, 23, so this total should actually be 4,300. So I made an adding mistake when I added it up. So add up 2,000, 3,400, 4,300. So the figure that was supposed to be here should be 4,300. Okay, that indicates to me that I made a mistake in the debtor's control. What is the total in the debtor's list? 4,200. So it's still not equal. So there must be another mistake that was made. So it means that I have to go and look for more mistakes. In, for P low, we had to transfer 1,200 to his account. So there's no mistake. For L stain, we had to transfer 800 and 900. Okay, so what do we see there? There's 800 and there we made a mistake. So actually this figure should be 1,700. If I change this figure to 1,700 to get the correct answer, it means that this total will now change to 4,300 and that will be equal to the debtor's control. So it means when I check my debtor's list with the debtor's control and they are not equal, I have to go and look where I made mistakes. So the first thing that I will always do is add up the balance totals to determine what was the total in the debtor's control if I made an adding mistake, what we did in this uh, exercise. Then if it's still not balancing, I will have to go and search for more mistakes until the two are exactly the same. Corrections in the debtor's control account. So the mistakes that I will correct in the control account is when a mistake was made on a source document because then I uh, posted that wrong figure from the source document to the journal. Because I recorded the wrong figure in the journal, I posted the wrong figure to the individual account of the person and the total in the subsidiary journal is not correct, so I've also posted the wrong total to my control account. So it means that when a mistake was made on a source document, both those will be recorded in the debtor's control and I will record them in the debtor's ledger. When no entry was made in the subsidiary journal, it means that the total is incorrect, so I have to correct my debtor's control. If no entry was made in the subsidiary journal, then it means I didn't post it to the individual account of the person, so it means I will have to correct both those, one in the debtor's control, and I will have to correct a mistake in the debtor's list. When a mistake was made in the debtor's control, so in the account itself I made a mistake, then I will only correct that mistake in the debtor's control account and not in the debtor's list. When the total of the debtor's control column in a subsidiary journal is incorrect, it means that the inside entries in the journal was correct, so I posted the correct figures to the different accounts of the debtors, but the total was wrong, therefore I made a mistake taking the wrong total to my control account, so both those I will only correct in the control account. When a mistake was made in the individual account of a debtor, it means when I posted it to his individual account, I recorded it on the wrong side of the account, 
or I posted into the wrong person's account or I swapped figures round. Whatever mistake I made in the individual account of a debtor will only be corrected in the debtor's list and that will not be corrected in the debtor's control because there is no mistake in the debtor's control. So what did we learn? Before a reconciliation is done, we must follow certain steps to make sure that we do it correctly. First of all, you must determine whether the mistake was made in the debtor's control account, in the debtor's list, or in both of them. If the mistake was only made in the control account, I will only correct it in the control account. If the mistake was only made in the debtor's ledger, I will only correct it in the debtor's ledger or in the debtor's list. If I made a mistake in both of them, I will have to correct it in both places. Secondly, you must determine where this mistake was made. Was it recorded on the debit side or the credit side? Then I can only determine how to correct this mistake. So if the mistake was made on the debit side and the amount is too high, the mistake will be corrected on the credit side. If the mistake was made on the debit side and the amount is too low, the mistake will be corrected on the debit side.